and the, the organizer of this event, the Young Marketing Professionals Network, which is very close to my heart, the young marketers, and I will tell you why. Uh, good morning, all participants, and special thank you to my good friend uh, and warrior in marketing, Grant Lee, who's been into this road for a long time. And my special uh, appreciation and thanks to uh, Mr. Tony Ajin uh, Monman, if I spelled it right, uh, the president <laughs> of the National Institute of, <laughs> right. National Institute of Marketing uh, of uh, Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria is a, is a place that is very close to my heart. I am originally from Brazil, uh, and I'm Canadian too, but I, I appreciate Africa, and I have, I have a huge appreciation uh, towards the country and the young a mass of marketers who's, who's coming from there. So today, because our event uh, is uh, very technical on marketing and tools. I am originally from Brazil uh, and I'm Canadian too, but I, I appreciate Africa. Oh, that's amazing. See, so you see, you have two Brazilian in this event. Uh, oh, wow. Awesome. <laughs> oh. So, so it's 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 my pleasure to be take part of uh, the Young Marketing Professional Network event, and today I, I as I talked with Grant, my good friend Grant, yesterday, this event will be it's full of technicians in marketing. So and this, as mentioned by uh, Mr. Tony, uh, these moments are special moments for reflection on what's going on. So I decided to bring uh, a topic that is much more philosophical for reflection, and then. You know the technical stuff we will be treating uh, late. It will be with very competent people that are around. So let me introduce Simo. The Chartered Institute of Marketing Management of Ontario was created by the Parliament of Ontario in, in 1988 with the blessing of Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth. And Mr. Tony, I'm really looking forward to connect with the National Institute of Marketing of Nigeria to have more collaboration and you know to foster the cause of making the world a better place through marketing, oh, yeah. not in spite of marketing. So why, why we, we think we, we wake every day excited is because we believe the marketing profession needs a paradigm shift. And this very much aligned with the theme of your, of your event today with the Young Marketing Professional Network. So uh, marketing has been, has been deemed uh, not trustworthy for a long time. Uh, by you know multiple stakeholders in the world, recent uh, uh, research by Gallup Institute in, in the United States ranks uh, sales professionals, uh, you know, uh, and, and number 18 among, in, in terms of trust by uh, the consumer. How do we do this at CIMO? Uh, by educating people, by facilitating, by persuading, by building capacity, by sharing knowledge by connecting uh, marketers and industry alike. And, and we believe that helping marketers, uh, it will change the world because we will help marketers to change the world. What do we do at CIMO? Skills development, we have the CIMO Academy, you're welcome to visit it, it's for free, uh, CIMOCX.org. We have 1,000, uh, 4,000 courses available online to everybody, it's free for all. Uh, academic accreditations for programs and school. We have professional designations for marketing professionals who are experienced. Uh, we have the Charter of Professional Marketers. Grant and myself, we are Charter of Professional Marketers. Uh, the Certified Marketers and Registered Marketers for Diploma Holders, which is a certification. And obviously we coach and mentor uh, young and senior professionals. So let's talk about the context of the world, context of the world today. I, we cannot separate uh, marketing from the context that we the context that we live at, and and today is really very important a reflection that we need to make. Uh, and and I, I I'm, I'm quoting an ancient twiz, uh, wisdom here, where it says, "If you wish peace, care for justice." And if we look around, uh, obviously we see that a lot of things need to happen uh, to see justice happening at the same uh, at the same time. So I'm choosing one philosopher that I am following uh, closely and he, he is, uh, he is uh, one of the most, like the best thinkers that I believe uh, has, has captured the, the context of nowadays. Um, and uh, the theme is liquid world. So we are living in unprecedented liquidity as mentioned by Zygmunt Bauman, the late Polish and uh, British philosopher who wrote a couple of books on liquid life, liquid times, 
a liquid moder modernity and even liquid love. And, and, and he captures the context of how the world has been changing from the solid state where we use everything well-defined, nation states, institutions, societies, community, towards the liquid state where no boundaries anymore. Globalization has taken over the world. So, and the liquidity, the liquid reality as a contest he defines, first starts with the reality that is transitioning and it's not permanent. We live in a dynamic and very constant change, constantly changing world. Uh, you know, the, the, the substitu substitution of the desire, the, the needs, you know, we marketers talk about a lot about our, the needs our, of our customers. And it has been in this liquid reality replaced by the constant desire for things. So it's not only need, we desire things. Uh, it has shaped the identity of people. So today we talk a lot about identity because nation states are not uh, looked as representative. And then you have the conversions between the identity and the consumers. So I am recognized by what I, I consume, whether it's an iPhone or a good car or whatever. It's not uh, as much as an identity thing as it used to be in the solid uh, state in the past. And the persona, we marketers look always at our target market and then we identify, we design the persona, we brand for persona. And, and now the persona has changed too in this liquid reality where consumers are a, com a competitive good in global market. We are always on social media. We're short sharing our stories, trying to compete for likes and for appreciation. And this is a global market. And also it shaped the consumption reality where rewarding uh, become a peculiarity and a vicious spiral has started between you know, possession and consumption. Now we have this obsession for, I need to possess things and I need to have the, you know, the youngest cell phone and uh, the, 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 you know, the freshest uh, applications and so on. So Zygmunt, ba Zygmunt, Zygmunt Bauman uh, challenges, he identified some challenges in liquid, uh, of the liquid times. As I said, the passage from the solid, well-defined society to a very fluid and liquid one. Uh, citizens are apathetic because leadership has not been able to solve their problem. And then we can see the results in elections uh, since 2017 in the world uh, and, and still happening. So we have a kind of radicalized discourse. Uh, we see curtailing of communals and the rays uh, uh, the rise of, uh, you know, individu individuality. I know that Africa, the communal is very important uh, and, and it has been in, uh, everywhere. And now we're seeing the curtailing of this community, the sense uh, of com uh, community. And the, we, we see a co collapse of this uh, social solidarity where people are, you know, have this close uh, uh, solidarity to others. And the collapse of long-term thinking. We think uh, people are starting, consumers are starting to think very short-term oriented. And this is really a, something that we need to reflect on. And as well as the emergence of the free choosers, which means, you know, uh, I am free to choose whatever I want. I don't, I, I don't care about other choices, others' choices. And this is something troublesome because we, we move towards what we call, you know, uh, ethical dilemma. Another Italian philosopher, uh, Umberto Eco, uh, he reflected on this liquid society started like uh, thought by uh, Bauman and, and he identifies in his book called Chronicles of a Liquid Society some challenges and some crisis. And he said, we are living in a crisis context nowadays. And I can see like the geopolitical situation, the COVID-19 response and all of these things are reflection to this. So first he said, we live a crisis of concept. Uh, we, we are losing, uh, we, are, we, are, we are not able to grasp the clear, clear concept of, you know, what can constitute a community. We are living in extreme individualism where people are like, you know, it's unbridled individualism where people are just focused on their selves, their image and the product that they want to project themselves to the world. Uh, and, and you see a lot of indignation around the world. Like people are, are really know what they don't want but they don't know what they want. And, and new narratives are, uh, you know, emerging. So you see people like two main narratives nowadays, as go once called it like, you know, in political uh, science, right and left and extreme right and extreme left. 
And postmodernism, as he says, uh, signals a crisis of brain narratives. So why awareness is important? We need, and that's why I'm bringing this question to all of us to reflect new, especially you, new marketers, because we hope that you will bring the change to this world, making the world a better place through marketing. Because if we are not aware, we cannot change this situation. There is a remedy to this. And that's why awareness is important. So what is happening to the community, to the persona, to the consumers? Uh, these are fused, in my opinion, into this liquid world. And they are confused. They lost their reference, uh, references and the referential uh, point has been lost uh, from within the society. So uh, what is happening to the persona as a consequence of this liquid world? I'm calling it liquid persona. We are so fluid. Our opinion is shaped by, and our trust is shaped. So customer uh, uh, are losing their trust. You know, uh, uh, trust definition has, has been morphed and, and been impacted by these liquid times. Uh, what are the limits between the digital me? How, what is the role of artificial intelligence in this liquid world? Uh, how, how do we, you know, uh, distinguish between the digital me on social media, the happy person that is, you know, showing the world a lot of happiness, whereas we have a lot of ins uh, 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 problems. So th these, uh, the rise of cyber, cyber physical consumers, the me digital, the me, you know, uh, 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 persona, uh, it, 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 it has been a challenge. And, and the entangled reality. We don't distinguish anymore between a genuine experience and artificial one. So you have all of these technology help things, uh, what we call deep, deep fake, you know, you can do whatever you want the fake news, augmented reality, invented reality. And then we ask ourselves, where are ethics in all of this? What is the ethical framework that we need, we, we need to use in order for uh, you know, dealing with this situation? And this is a special and critical question for marketers. Is it deontological, consequential, or relative ethics? We see the, the rise of relative ethics where people think if that pleases me, it's ethical. And that's the extreme individualism that we are talking about in this liquid world that generated the liquid persona. So my question here uh, regarding the theme of our reflection, are we shifting the paradigm or we have gone far away and we need to return to the old paradigm where we, where we are more humane, more ethical, more socially and, and environmentally responsible? Is, is this event of coronavirus virus is an invitation for us to go back and to revisit our old fashioned concepts. So what COVID-19 has done, in my opinion, it accelerated change that has been in place. And, and uh, that's what I was thinking about. Uh, is it because of COVID-19 that all of these things are happening? Yes, it is. But the change has been coming on for a long time now, since the beginning of this century, since the 2000s. So what COVID-19 implications on the business ecosystem? And, and these are a couple of the collection of research that I've done. Uh, and, and the COVID-19 has forced us to rethink, reimagine the workplace. How are we redesigning the world? Look at us. Like I, I would love to be in Nigeria today to meet all of you. But it's, it's, uh, I'm here in Canada and we are meeting through online means. Uh, the redesigning of the business model, you know, we need to reflect, need to adjust, as mentioned by, you know, uh, Mr. Tony, uh, the president uh, of the National Institute of uh, Marketing of Nigeria. You know, we need to adjust, to adapt. That's what Darwin has said in order to, to survive this wave of uh, catastrophe. We need to revisit the supply chain. We just suddenly, because of globalization and the liquid world, we discovered that, look, uh, we have put all the eggs in the, on, in the same basket and, and some strategic, uh, uh, you know, uh, suppliers uh, need to be rethought because the supply chain was deeply affected, especially regarding medical equipment. And obviously, we have the organizational culture that has been impacted. Uh, we, we see the consequences 
uh, on businesses, especially small and mid-sized businesses. They're laying off people and big businesses as well. You know, uh, tourism industry has been deeply impacted as much as other, other industries. And, and how do you recover the culture? How do you work out this culture? How do you recover the trust, yeah, which is hard to retain nowadays? And obviously the management model. How do we manage people remotely? All of these things were happening before COVID-19, but now we are forced to accelerate the implementation. So thinking of Bauman and um, Umberto Eco and uh, the philosophers behind it, I think we as marketers, especially you young marketers, the hope of this world, we need to rethink our marketing profession. And I coined a new term that I called liquid marketing and calling based on this liquid reality so how does marketing look like in a liquid world liquid marketing should go back to human centric we all claim now we are human centric we're cust customer centric we do all of the best for our customers and with this liquid world the narrative has been changed so we need to go back to human centric approach it should be meaningful and compassionate because if we don't have human beings as a center of our marketing activity, we are losing the site. It should be customer experience oriented where we, we, we should be focused on developing the most meaningful experience to our customers. And it's, it should be technologically responsible. We have access to a lot of information. Artificial intelligence has given us wings to fly to unknown places. So what do we do with this information? We need to be responsible in using the technology too. And again, we need to be hyper ethical, socially and environmentally. We are depleting the planet. We, are, we have remarkably advanced as, as in, in terms of technology, but I'm not sure about our advances as a society. We need to revisit all of those uh, issues. And as marketers, we have this obligation. So this is the concept of liquid marketing. Or how do we do this? Through a holistic approach to marketing, systems thinking mindset, design thinking orientation, a curious, compassionate, courageous thinkers in marketing, multiple perspectives that we need to bring in the table, the user's experience, the consumer's experience, the consumer's well-being, doing the right things, you know, and, and looking, looking at sustainable change through holistic problem uh, uh, finding and approach and actively breaking down silos. This individualism, this liquid world has created extreme individualism. Now we need to break out these silos. So we need to shift our mindset back to the old fashioned paradigm. And this is my invitation to all of you, all of the new marketers. You are the hope of this planet. You are the hope of the humanity. We rely on you, as mentioned by, Dr., by Mr. Tony. Uh, we, we, we are old-fashioned marketers. We want you to take over this profession. Do the right things. Make this planet a better place to live. This is our first We work every day to make the world a better place to be And we invite you all to come on board, to join us in this cause that is worth fighting for. So thank you very much again, uh, AO and Grant and all the participants. Thank you very much. It's my honor uh, to open in this event with, you know, my remarks. I'm sorry if I brought too much uh, in, on philosophical things. I think we need philosophy and marketing. This yeah. is a discipline that has been lacking there. So uh, here's my email. I am available for questions. If you need, send me, shoot me an email. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. You need to unmute yourself clap for it. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Yosef Yosef. Uh, I remember the last time I was in Brazil, Sao Paulo, it was a wonderful experience. <laughs> Good to oh, yeah. listen to you. And that was a, I mean, very, you know, engaging and, uh, you know, thoughtful uh, speech there. I can assure you, uh, I'm sure you will share your slide with me eventually. And I can show you that it will form part of the you know, discussion of this uh, summit. And uh, for us too, 
uh, at the team, uh, young marketing professionals. Uh, all of the paper that will be discussed here are going to be part, part of our learning material, at least for the next three months. So we may likely still invite you, you know, to the team. This is general. This is international. But when we are having our closed discussion, of course, yes, we will still invite you to share some thoughts with you, with us, and that we will have more time, you know, to do more justice. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you, and uh, we thank you very dearly that uh, the paper is, has started, and uh, it will be full part of the channel, like I mentioned earlier. So thank you. I want to say again, say thank you to Dr. Lee. All right, uh, maybe he's doctor. We have no now. I think he's professor, Dr. Lee or Grant, uh, Professor Grant Lee, uh, <laughs> the registrar. I, I'm sure uh, uh, he, he has not used that title, but of course, yes, uh, maybe he's hiding it. All right, so um, yes, uh, we may have questions for Dr. Yusuf. But, uh, at the appropriate time, uh, we will be able to exchange uh, some of those questions of, uh, or questions based on the paper. He just uh, discussion just opened up. But uh, because of time, we will take in all of the discussions, and then we can then have our questions and uh, engagement interaction session. Okay, so um, once again, thank you, Dr. Yusuf. So right now, uh, let me uh, 